Hey 36 Fanatics, Steven here. Today I'm working on some seat repairs on my 328i E36. So this video is going to be my recline feature repair, which more than likely it's going to be a gear in the gearbox. They have two plastic gears inside. One of them's probably went bad. Inside the gearboxes they have these plastic gears and they they don't frequently go bad but when your seat stops working it's frequently the plastic gear and what you'll see is it's broken into like a hundred pieces and shattered into little bits and it just does this over time and one good way to tell up oh, there's my puppy you can hear you can hear the motor whirring but it's not doing anything and of course this is my recliner my recline's not working at all at this point. So I've actually done this repair before on this same seat and I'm probably replacing the exact same gear. I would highly recommend not going on eBay and getting the really really cheap one for like eight bucks because the quality is not as good because like I said I just replaced this like two years ago so I'm not very happy. First thing you're gonna do is you should have buttons or caps over your bolts over here. You're gonna wanna push your seat all the way back until you can see these bolts. Like I said, they probably got a cap on and you just pop off with a screwdriver. These nuts are 5 8 or 16 millimeter, either one. And just loosen them up and get the nut off. And you got one on each end. Okay, so I got both nuts out now. Go ahead and scoot it all the way up until you can see the front. Whoop, sorry Zaxby, you alright? Alright, at this point you should be able to see the two rear bolts. Like I said, they probably got a cap on them. And then the one right here same size remove it okay so I picked up the seat like I said all you gotta do is pull out those four bolts and the thing comes right out you do got some wires underneath the seat though that you need to disconnect you got this wire running up to the seat and it's got several connectors right here underneath the seat disconnect those um, like I said, I've just got the seat pulled up a bit so I can see underneath here and I'm going to disconnect them. And then I'm going to be able to flip the entire seat. Um, it's also got a little zip tie I'm going to have to clip, but no big deal. So normally there would be a kick plate that bolts in right here, I do believe. However, this seat is missing the kick plate. I probably forgot to put it back on when I originally replaced the gear. Here you can see the connectors a little bit better because I got the whole seat flipped over at this point. And then here's the wires. So like I said, you have three motors controlling the various control the various uh, seats seat movements on this vehicle. And then you have several gear boxes. The one we're after is this one right here. This is the one that has the gear that goes bad. So to get you your gear, you're going to need to remove first these two motors. You got to remove this top motor first. It's a T25. It's only got two bolts, one here, one there, and then the same for the bottom one. Here's the bottom motor. It's got the rod coming out, and then you got the top motor here, which has the rod that fits into the motor right here. So now you got access to your gearbox. The next thing you're going to need to do is remove all of these all of these small Torx bits here on the top. They have to be removed in order to gain access in order to pull the lid off. Okay, so most of these smaller ones are T20s. And then the two larger ones at the back are T25s. So just gotta go ahead and remove these. You could pull this whole seat out or you could just do what I do, what I'm doing, and just flip the seat inside the car. I feel like it makes it easier. 
Okay, something to remember here. The two in the far back over here and the far back are much longer than the rest of them. You gotta remember that when you're reinstalling these. Okay, so my gear is not broken into a million pieces, but as you can see, it's uh, missing a good chunk of it right there where it had broken up. So that's my problem. This isn't turning the plastic gear. Plastic gears that stop making contact. So just got to replace that tiny little gear right there and we will be good. Got my new rod and I've got my new gear my new cat plastic gear now when i bought this thing it actually came with a new rod so i didn't have to press it on however if you're so typically when you buy these things they're not going to come with a new rod you have to press it on it's really not hard to do uh i sometimes if I, the last time i did this when i do it on another car and i had to press it on uh i just took the back side of a wrench that had a rubber that had a rubber part on it, or that was a rubber handle, and I just hit the end of this and pressed it into the gear. The gear has two sides on it. Um, one side is obviously, the holes are bigger than the other side, and it's got like these little flanges that are coming out. That's the side you wanna press into. So I got my gearbox out. This is the gear that I actually replaced last time, and that one, if I recall, you don't need to press in. It actually doesn't, press into the rod if I recall correctly. You're gonna want to take some grease and if you really want to go the extra mile you can pull out all of these pieces right here and you can re-grease them because I mean this is like 20 this is like 22 year old grease right here so but I'm not gonna do that so I am just going to really I'm just gonna grease it real good so I'm going to go ahead and pop my gear back in. There we go. And you can see now that the whole thing's spinning. Okay, before when I was first taking a look at it, it didn't spin at all because the bear, the uh, gear was broken. Another repair to do while you're doing this, here is the second. Here's the second gear right here. If this one's gone bad, you know that this one's not gonna be that far away from it. So I would go ahead and buy both of these and replace both of them just as preventive maintenance. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. These right here are the rest of the metal gears. And I mean, you can pop them out and re-grease them if you want to. I'm not gonna do that, but you can. So it's time to pop back on our cover once everything is back into place and it is so the only thing to really remember about putting back on your cover is that you're going to want to remember the two long ones go in the back over here all right now you're going to want to go ahead and put back on your motors you're going to want to put the one that goes on the back with a, with a rod on it in first, like so. Last but not least, once you've put back on your wiring and everything, you're gonna go ahead and bolt back down the rear bolts. Make sure to tighten these real good and make sure the railing and everything is properly aligned. Now what you're going to do, come back to your seat control, go ahead and push it all the way back. Let's test out the seat. And look at that. It is now working. Still really ugly, but at least it works.